So let's look at the basics of ambisonics in order to work with immersive audio. In contrary to channel-based audio, ambisonics is a whole different format and approach. You don't want to have an audio stream that is just going to one speaker and this one speaker is in a fixed direction to point at you and you know this in the mixing stage, but instead you describe a sound field around the listener. And this sound field is based on mathematical models. So you can just easily decode all of your ambisonic stream and one mix to various different loudspeaker setups. The mathematical models to describe the sound sphere around the listener are looking like this. These visual depictions of the mathematical functions to describe spherical harmonics, so the surface of a sphere, are actually virtual microphones and their polar patterns. So the first virtual microphone that Ambisonics is displaying is an omnidirectional microphone covering the sound pressure on the sound sphere surface. We can then add figure of eight microphones pointing in all directions of, sp of the space to get information about where sound is coming from. Actually, when you think about it, combining an omnidirectional microphone and a figure of eight microphone sounds familiar as it is the basis of the MS Stereo technique. But by including two more microphones pointing in different directions, we can describe a three-dimensional space with only four channels of audio. And these four channels make up the first order of ambisonics, which has the low spatial resolution. Adding more virtual microphones with more complex non-realistic polar patterns we can further enhance the spatial resolution, but also we have to carry all these five more audio streams along. So this is a trade-off. Having these nine virtual microphone channels in total, we add second order ambisonics, and when adding seven more, so 16 channels in total, we add third order ambisonics, which already gives a nice spatial resolution. Ambisonics is a rather old format, which was invented in the 70s, but I think it will be future-proof because it's really versatile in its playback options. So as I mentioned earlier, you only have to mix once and you can decode your mix to an arbitrary speaker setup and not only over the optimal speaker setup shown in the picture below. When talking about ambisonics, we have to also make sure that we're talking about the right formats, as there are different ambisonics formats. What I described to you just now is the B format, so the mathematical representation of the sound sphere, using different virtual microphones. The number of the used microphones will determine the order that we use in the ambisonic signal. But we also have to think about how the format looks like when we decode it, as we still have to decode it to a channel-based system. So while decoding to the system, we take all the information which is in the ambisonic stream and decode it to a channel-based audio stream, where each channel again gets assigned its discrete audio channel. At first, this ambisonics format would be called D format, as for decoded format. But more important over time became the G format, which is decoded to the 5.1 channel layout but today it's mostly used for a ambisonic signal that was decoded into any loudspeaker setup. And then there's also the A format. The A format includes all the signals from the microphone capsules of an ambisonics microphone. A first order ambisonics microphone will often consist of four different microphone capsules. To ensure that we can use these signals in our workflow, we have to encode our A format into a B format, and the manufacturers of the microphones will often provide their own plugin for that. There's also the C and the UHJ format, C standing for consumer, and UHJ is a special version of that, which could be downgradable to even stereo. It is not important for us anymore, as this didn't yield high quality results, but it has some interesting effects in producing wider than normal stereo sounds. Also, there's not only the format that we have to think about, but also the ordering of the components and the normalization mode. So we can have ABCDG and UHJ format, but also there are different standards for component ordering of the different channels of the virtual microphones. 
Nowadays we oftentimes use the ACN ordering and the FUMA standard is a bit out of fashion. There's also this topic about normalization. So nowadays we often use SN3D normalization as this comes in really handy while working with your ambisonics signals. As no ambisonics channel will exceed the level of the first channel of your ambisonics stream, so your omnidirectional microphone. So you just have to really think about uh, leveling one channel and monitoring one channel for your ambisonics mix gain staging. The Ambix format is a modern standard which is including the B format, ACN ordering and, and SN3D normalization mode and facilitates our workflow. So there's much more material to cover about ambisonics since it's really well researched since the 70s, but it never came to really commercial use. This is somehow changing right now because microphone manufacturers are manufacturing ambisonics microphones and also there are many plugin manufacturers that rely on processing their immersive audio content using ambisonics. So let's take a closer look at them.